Started out, I spent five years as a high school teacher, um, teaching health classes, leadership classes. Um, transitioned into a, a focus on violence prevention, moved into a, a, a district administrator position overseeing a safe schools unit, and uh, spent my last year as a site administrator for a comprehensive high school in Southern California. Um, you know, just started to see in the, the uh, just the term cyberbullying started showing up. Um, you know, the programs that, that I developed put kids into focus groups and uh, where they just share out and their voice and they talk about the critical issues on campus and also we started seeing this this critical issue of cyberbullying coming out and you know it took on a little bit different flavor than the, the schoolhouse bullying that was going on. You know the, the situation with cyberbullying it was happening outside a schoolhouse and that threw a whole different you know spin on, on schools where they were going well what do we do with this behavior that happens on a Saturday night but yet Monday morning when we walk into school it's in our face as site administrators and district administrators and you know it was a lot of uh, you know uh, I think what, what created the the magnitude of cyberbullying was the amount of kids that would see it and you know the stories were you know not so much that that these words hurt it was the amount it was the the status of the person just absolutely would drop because in the eyes of their peers and you're talking about a massive audience um, that status of the kid was uh, being deflated. And, um, you know, I think it was the, the, the biggest pieces were, were not so much the words, but the, the audience, the amount, the size of the audience. It wasn't, it wasn't something that was happening in a bathroom and only three or four guys would see, you know, it's happening in an arena where there's thousands and thousands of kids. And it keeps happening over and over. You know, out of this, you know, to address these, <coughs> Uh, these critical issues. You know, I sat back when I was teaching the, the leadership class and I saw a lot of our approaches just simply micro. We'd train one kid in skills to facilitate conversation with another kid. It was micro, one-on-one. -on -one. And at the time I was, I was working in these programs, we started seeing, you know, some serious group tensions happening on our campus, particularly racial tension. It was kind of like, you know, what, do, what kind of approach do we have to address that group, you know? And so, what we needed to do is we needed to create a group identity. And so what we sat back is I, I, I started looking at, you know, how do gangs gather their power? Um, you know, why, why are gangs in Southern California and California continue to, uh, on the rise? When we're pumping so much money and effort into them, why are gangs? And so there was something positive about this dynamics of gang. And when you started sitting down talking to kids, kids would continue to get into gangs for the sense of belonging, the support, the family. And so I sat back and said, well, can we take that same angle? Can we create a family on campus where it represents every kid on campus and we create a group identity and let that group identity push the movement? So you know, what we did is we created the PLUS program, Peer Leaders Uniting Students. We, we created an identity that serves as this motto of kids taking care of kids. And that identity is not a moment in time, it's a lifestyle. And so, you know, on a campus, you know, here in Southern California, we've got 54 high schools and middle schools doing the PLUS program. Every one of those schools has a team of students that have been trained in how to facilitate activities. And these activities are conversations amongst their peers, sitting down and talking about the critical issues on a campus. What are the critical issues on our campus? How do they impact you? How do they impact us? And what can we do about it? You're not in this battle alone. It's about us. You know, so we started seeing this group identity take shape. That now you're part of something bigger than yourself to go tackle these critical issues. You know, in doing so, it puts a platform on the table that kids can come on a regular basis on a high school or middle school campus and talk about the issues, facilitate a peer to peer. And as part of that, at the end of it, they become part of Plus Two. So the identity is a self replicating community of kids who are now taking care of kids. And, you know, I'll ask the question tonight show me another, show me another theater on a Friday night where we're going to have a couple hundred kids that are committed to addressing this issue of cyberbullying on a Friday night. You know, these kids should be out, but they're committed to coming here.